Welcome everyone. In this video, we will be discussing some common scenario based questions you may encounter in AWS exams and their solutions. Let's dive right into it. So the first scenario, you have been tasked with encrypting EBS volumes that are restored from unencrypted EBS snapshots. So what should you do in this particular scenario? So the best solution is to encrypt EBS volumes restored from unencrypted EBS snapshots. You can copy the snapshot and enable encryption with a new symmetric customer master key, which is also known as CMK while creating an EBS volume using the snapshot. Basically, this will ensure that the restored volumes are encrypted. So the next scenario, you need to limit the maximum number of requests from a single IP address. How can you achieve this? So the best solution would be to limit the number of maximum number of requests from a single IP address. You can create rate based rule in web application firewall, AWS web application firewall and set the desired rate limit. So this will help protect your application from excessive traffic from a single IP address itself. The next scenario, you want to grant the bucket owner full access to all uploaded objects in an S3 bucket. So what step should you take to achieve this? So you can create a bucket policy that requires users to set the object ACL, which is also known as access control list to bucket owner full control. So this will ensure that the bucket owner has complete control over the objects in the bucket. In the next scenario, you need to protect objects in an S3 bucket from accidental deletion or overwrite. How can you achieve this? So for this, you can enable versioning and enable multi-factor authentication delete. Basically versioning keeps multiple versions of an object. If in case you delete one version of an object, you can restore it from the history. And MFA delete requires additional authentication before deleting or overwriting objects, adding an extra layer of protection. Next scenario, you want to access resources on both on-prem and AWS using on-prem credentials stored in Active Directory. How can you achieve this? Basically, you can set up SAML 2.0 based federation using a Microsoft Azure Active Directory Federation service which is also known as ADFS. So this will allow users to authenticate with their on-prem credentials and access AWS resources securely. In the next scenario, you need to secure the sensitive data stored in EBS volumes. What should you do? To secure sensitive data stored in EBS volumes, you can enable EBS encryption. This encrypts the data at rest, providing an additional layer of security for your sensitive information. The next scenario, you want to ensure that the data in transit and data at rest of an Amazon S3 bucket is always encrypted. How can you achieve this? You can enable Amazon S3 server side encryption or use client side encryption. So these encryption methods protect your data from unauthorized access during transition and storage. So this will also ensure that the data in transit and data at rest of an Amazon S3 bucket is always encrypted. The next scenario, you need to ensure or secure a web application by allowing multiple domains to serve SSL traffic over the same IP address. What step should you take? So to secure a web application and allow multiple domains to serve SSL traffic over the same IP address, you can use AWS Certificate Manager to generate an SSL certificate. Associate the certificate to a CloudFront distribution and enable server name indication, which is also known as SNI, which allows multiple SSL certificates to be served from a single IP address. The next scenario, you want to control access for several S3 buckets using a gateway endpoint to allow access to trusted buckets. How can you achieve this? So to control access for several S3 buckets and allow access to trusted buckets, you can create an endpoint policy for the trusted S3 buckets. 
This policy specifies the permissions and the access controls for the buckets access through the gateway endpoint. So that concludes our discussion on common AWS exam scenario based questions and their solutions. Remember to familiarize yourself with these scenarios and understand the appropriate solutions to succeed in your AWS exam. This is just a part one of this series. If you want more series on scenario based questions, let me know in the comment section. I'll mo do more such scenario based questions on my channel. Thank you all for watching. If you found this video helpful, please like, share and subscribe to our channel. Stay tuned for more exam tips and tricks. Until next time, happy learning and bye.